The conflict between the Edo State Governor, Godwin Obasaki, and the All Progressive Congress APC's National Chairman, Adam Sushomole, is still on, and this time, the subject of contention is the presence of the National Chairman in Edo State. Plus, it is regional and community policing season, and it seems everyone, including the Mieti Allah, is jumping on the bandwagon. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. The war between the Edo State Governor, Godwin Obasaki, and the All Progressive Congress National Chairman, Adam Sushomole, has taken a new turn, as Obasaki has stated that the National Chairman should notify him whenever he intended to visit home. This has come in barely days after the national chairman was booed at the airport by youths. The road to his residence was also barricaded with two trucks, one of which was set ablaze. Obasaki, while addressing reporters on these occurrences, said Oshomole should have informed the government of his visit. Before I introduce my guest, let's take a look at Obasaki making these statements. For us, we're just extending the courtesy. I mean, this is the president. Someone who has served the country at the highest level, unlike the incident, the unfortunate incident that we've been having, you know, in Edo State, which is really sad, um, where somebody who has been the governor of a state is visiting the state and does not realize that courtesy demands that he could inform the governor or the government apparatus of his visit. And that the chief executive in is in charge of his security when he is in the state. So it's a really sad and unfortunate that people who have served, who should know better, decide to behave the way they do, or behave with impunity and utter sense of lawlessness. It's my pleasure to introduce our guest tonight on the program. I have um, Larry Emenike. Thank you very much for Thank coming. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure. And we have Leonard Ebute. Thank you very much Thanks for so coming on the program. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, in my limited knowledge, I don't um, think there is a law that a governor should inform, an, a former governor should inform an incumbent that he's coming to a state, especially if that is his home state. Let me start with you, Larry. Or am I wrong? No, I think uh, if you listen to the governor very well, you, you discover that there was no place he mentioned, you know, he talked about the law. He was talking about courtesy. You know, and when you look at so many things that has happened in those states, you know, the infractions, the death, and the vandalization, and so many other things, I think the major you know, the major responsibility of every government is the security of lives and property. And if you look at that, or maybe if my use that particular context, you will discover that uh, what the governor, the incumbent governor, you know, was saying made sense, you know. And uh, when you look at Oshomole and whatever that has been happening within the APC leadership, controlled or, or shared by Oshomole, you will discover that whatever infighting that has been you know, occurring in a do state, you know, should, anybody with his right senses as his chief security officer will not allow somebody like Oshomole, one, as a former governor, two, as the chairman of APC, the ruling party, coming into a state, you know, without informing the governor. It, it, it goes to show some certain level but of some suspicion. Will, some will contextualize it and say, if you are not my friend, why would I tell you that I am coming to my home? Because he is saying that, considering you know the situation as yeah. it is, that I mean it makes sense for uh, Oshomole to tell Obasaki that he's coming. Do you share the same view? Absolutely. I mean, the, oh, he is a sitting national chairman of the party. I want to move away from his being a former governor. A former governor is like every other citizen. He can go to his village. He's responsible for. I mean, the security apparatus that caters to everybody should cater to him. But when you are a holder of a political office, the highest party office in the land, the protocol of the office demands that if you are visiting a state, particularly a state that is controlled by your party, right, 
the protocol of the office must require that. Uh, it may not be written, but it is practical. It is even much more important when there is some altercation happening between you and the chief executive of the state. That will put some responsibility for your safety in his hands. But it also, it's also common if, if, sense, if, right? if you're taking this line of thought, you, both of you seem to think that it is common sense. It is the logical thing to do. But apparently, Oshomale does not hold that school of thought. No. And one would argue, if you're looking at it, one would argue that if... Um, Obasaki is the chief security officer of the state. Okay. By implication, it means that every citizen of that state, irrespective of your position, you come in, you're supposed to be protected. But I, but I don't think uh, the, the governor has even uh, faulted and, uh, you know, as regards the security of the Edo people. But I think we must also take something out of this, basically because if a, a citizen, let me not use common, a citizen of Edo state Always, whenever you comes into a state, you know, there happens to be some certain chaos, you know, infractions here and there, death. I think no governor will, will fold his hands to watch you enter that state, even as a layman, of, you, know, you know, on the streets of Edo State, to be moving freely without being monitored. So as far as I'm concerned, as a sitting chairman of the ruling party, as a former governor of that particular state, regardless of whatever, because why we are saying this thing was because of the infraction he had at the airport. And now he has thrown the allegation, accusation, to the governor. So, and that is why the governor said, you would have informed me. Well, they've denied that, that he had any hand in that so booing. So had he of, been, or did the, you know, the, 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 the necessary thing, this accusation or allegation would have a reason. But again, I, I, that's, con I, I okay. contend that the allegation in itself is childish. Childish in the sense that you were governor of this state for eight years. What just happened is a manifestation of his unpopularity. I mean, Obaseki has been governor for how long? Three years, maybe. You, you control this state for eight years, and you are the national party, sitting national party chairman of the same party the governor is from, this is your hometown, you get booed, you, 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 get, you get deprived Elton of access to certain water. areas. It is a referendum on his popularity. And I believe that if the state security apparatus had not risen to the occasion, it would probably have yeah. degenerated into something more. So the security requirement right, of a sitting party chairman is not the same as an ordinary Edo citizen that is strolling to Edo. He's not a national figure, he's unknown. So the general security that protects everybody takes care of him. But they have peculiar security requirements. This is why they have security details following them around. Yet again, yeah. I'm going to flip this conversation yes. and refer to what happened in Katsina when the president visited and some residents allegedly booed him. Um, subsequently, we got statement from the presidency that that was orchestrated, that they weren't booing the president. And now we have a similar scenario with Oshomale. Do you expect a spin doctor to come and say uh, that this, there is a possibility that these people were hired, even though the state government is denying that they had anything to do with it. Yes. So let's, let's, let's set the benchmark straight, right? That the people on their own have democratic duties, responsibilities, legal responsibilities to express their opinion on their leaders using nonviolent means, booing being one of them. And it's not just a Nigerian thing. So if Buhari going to a, a, a somewhere that is his territory, politically speaking, is getting booed, and someone is pinning it to mean he has political enemies, it means also that his popularity in that area had waned. So fundamentally, we're in a democracy, and people have the right to freedom of expression if there is no damage caused to life and property. So well, but I, if, I, if you're saying I, his popularity, I, and, I, I keep, and, I keep and, and interjecting. And people, people yeah. stage protests. People mm. organized to protest. Okay, so to, to, so to say that make... some people may have organized it is, is a moot point. Of course, it is people that organize those kinds of things to register their protests. OK, I, I was, let, me, let me bring this question to okay. you. I know you wanted to add something. You can add it to the question. Um, okay. There was, you were saying he's unpopular, but there was a pro 
Oshomole protest in Abuja, That's as well as an anti Oshomole protest in Abuja. So the two of them, there was, there were, these were people. These were people. How do you now? Does it now it's, mean? It, 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 I mean, what we've, interpretation we've, really? We've, we've always, you know, passed this particular funny terrain before. You know, a counter protest, <laughs> an afterthought. I would call it because. One, you are boying somebody, you are protesting in Abuja, you know, regarding what happened in Edo State. I think it's Edo people that should know whether Oshomole was popular or not. I, I don't want to go into that context, but you, 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 you referred to something that happened in Borono State. I don't know That's if I will. Casina State, you know, that is the president's uh, mm -hmm. hometown. I, I don't know whether you are aware or you are in the knowledge of one particular information coming, numerous of them, you know, but one particular area was mentioned that they have started paying one million or they've been taxed one million by the Boko Harams for safety in the same Castella state. If you are from that particular environment and the president who happens to be your brother, you know, comes to that particular state, I don't know the kind of eye you were going to see him with. So I, I think basically it's all about people not being happy with the present day situation. Whether you have people that are sponsored to counter whatever protest, it is their civic right. Nobody is even contesting that with them. But the reality on ground, as, as far as so many of us, you know, Nigerians are concerned, is that the reality is that the, the, the economy is not moving forward. The security has failed. That is why you have the application of so many other regional things that are springing up. You know, and so many other things. Are we talking about the help? Are we talking? What are we talking about? Right, so let's, let, let's we have a great challenge regarding that. Uh, based conversation, even though I'm going to take it from the opposition mm -hmm. uh, perspective and then try and spin it around. Mm -hmm. The um, outgoing chairman of the PDP in a do state, uh, Dan Obia, has I'll be rather has uh, come out to say that, uh, I quote him, the quarrel between the godfather and his godson has been used to bring the vehicle of development to a halt in the state. He's saying that the crisis is affecting governance in a those state. Do you agree? What's your, I mean, is there some substance to this argument? It's difficult because what are we benchmarking against? If we're benchmarking Obaseki versus his predecessor at the same periods in their lifetime as governors, then it's difficult to substantiate this with the realities on ground. And, and that's the most common, the quickest way to do that benchmark. If we are benchmarking Obaseki against his possible um, 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 representations to say, I'm going to do this, do this, then maybe, and that will be a general problem when you're trying to run the state. It will be a major distraction uh, on Obaseki if he allows someone sitting in Abuja to determine how he runs government in his state. And I think for me, as far as democracy and a national consciousness is concerned, we need to break down this barrier. If someone is going to do a job and is going to be accountable for that job, Nobody else should interfere with how he does the job because nobody else is going to get caned for not doing a great job. This, this happens in Edo, it happens in Lagos, it happens in a few other areas where the, the, the walls of Godfatherism hasn't been completely broken down and it's retrogressive to us as a nation. Um, um, we, the, the, the Chief Akonde, um, B.C. Akonde led National Reconciliation Committee uh, that has been set up uh, to help, you know, um, settle this situation. Do you expect that they will be able to achieve much considering how divisive and how um, uh, corrosive this whole crisis has become? You have the Obasaki fashion, you have the Adam Sushimale faction. I think it doesn't need anything, you know, for one to. Uh, Akonde was once the chairman of uh, a political party. And I think he was the first chairman of, uh, 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 is it ACN, that later merged with uh, CPC and all the rest to form APC. So he has always been a political figure as far as politics in Nigeria is concerned. But I think the, the, the major crisis there, you know, the problem I'm going to, I'm, I'm seeing, or I'm envisaging that will arise from this particular issue you know, will certainly come from the leadership of the political party controls by the chairman. Because if you look at the allegations being thrown up 
especially look at the chairman of the governor's forum, you know, the allegations that has been going on from so many, you know, party members and so many other things, regard, you know, regarding the uh, Oshomole being the accuser, being the prosecutor, being everything together all by himself, and him not being receptive to criticisms. I, I think he's going to have some certain impact regarding whatever, whoever uh, has been given a mandate, you know, to, 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 to middle or, or put a stop to some of these infractions that is going on within the political party. One is not helping the party at the center because one, it has been always, it has always been a distraction for the leadership. Even with Oshomole, if you look at how the turn of events from their elections and so many other things they've lost, then coming to those state is also something. But then, if Obaseke should, uh, Obaseke should be in the shoe of somebody like Ngige, when such a thing happened in Anambra State, that particular infraction in Anambra State created massive development in Anambra State. Exactly. Because that godfather exactly. factor was completely erased. Exactly. And uh, Ngige has no other option than to perform. Absolutely. And you saw what happened in Anambra State. So, and even after that, Peter Obi, who has no godfather, you saw the marvelous thing he did in Anambra State. And that is how governors should be. But in Nigeria, you have a situation with godfather reason is always retrogressive. Yeah, you, you, you threw up challenges for the Akonde-led committee, but you didn't say if you believe that they will be able to succeed. He has no option, as far as I'm concerned. It's not only him. The former chairman, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, 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 the former chairman before uh, Oshomole, uh, what's his name? The Oyegu. Oyegu yeah. They are all members of the committee. And, okay. these are, and for our sakes, and the should the president the... step in, do you think? Because he's been quiet about the whole controversy. For our sakes, right, and for the sake of our democracy, we need this kind of quarrels to happen more often. I hope really? that this year, Kondi and Co. fail woefully. Certainly, like he mentioned, you right? want them to fail. Why would you Absolutely. want them to fail? Absolutely, if someone is trying to be governor and the other person who is not governor wants to govern the same state simultaneously, it cannot happen. And resisting that empowers the masses. Really? Because, yes, because, because when you don't, say when you don't have a elephant fight, no. the grass suffers. In this case, the masses is not a grass. The grass in this case is the existing political structure that had held the masses down. The masses then become your godfathers, like you talked about in Gigi scenario. You have to now draw support from the people the behind people. you, rather than a big shot somewhere yes. who thinks he made you. And, and that still it goes back to the question voted. I asked earlier about how this is affecting the people Positively. of governance. Positively. In state. Do you actually believe that's the Positively, case? Positively, yes. Now the people are able to come out and say, we don't want you openly. The people are coming to express their support for someone that was untouchable prior to this time. This is what democracy ought to be. So for the sakes of our democracy, I'm happy Mr. President has kept really, really quiet. I hope that BC and Kande and Co. will fail woefully. And I hope that other people who have lived in the shadow of Godfatherism, retrogressive Godfatherism, let's not generalize yes. that every Godfather brings bad things to the no. Retrogressive but Godfatherism, I hope this serves as an eye opener to those governors that are living so, under those shackles to break free and earn the support and respect so of the, the people that govern. If you're saying that they're going to fail, what would be, how do you see this scenario ending? Like, there must be an end sometime. No, the, an end, you can't continue see, indefinitely. The balance of power. The balance of power. How? See, let me let, tell let's, you. Let's, let me, let me, we have examples, you know, uh, of which I've, I've stated some. You know, no, I mean, in this particular case, this okay. has been going on. We know some of the bone of contention, even though they refuse to acknowledge that these are the issues that is actually spoiling this um, mm. uh, controversy. But it has to come to an end. Yes. How, how do you see this coming to an end? No, it, it should come to an end, and it has to come to <laughs> an end. When Oshomole, you know, and Obaseke, two of them, there are two elephants, according to what the, the narrative you, you used. But then when the people... When it has come to the people to take responsibility. Because one of Beseke must have to fall back somewhere. And the Shomole must have to fall back somewhere. And the only thing the people are praying for is that that particular something will continue so that they will be those that will be in charge. It has happened before. You know, in Anambra State, it has happened in so many states. So I feel for us, you know, the, the arrogance in government 
is getting so so nauseating that sometimes you 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 pray for some certain things. You know, you you feel it as an abnormality. But then sometimes you pray for it to happen so that we might see a, a, a thorough deviation from some certain things that have become Isn't a norm. Isn't this putting the party in a, I know you have limited time, in a bad spot, considering that there, there is opposition in the party that is watching um, all of this. What it, lessons should they be taking away when it comes to the issue of leadership and God for that reason? You see, as I'm taking the position of the masses on this matter, and we really don't care whether it's APC or PDP. They yes. were the same people recycling across board, right? So let's leave party out of it. It might benefit the PDP candidate if the PDP is wise enough to present a credible candidate and win the polls, <coughs> it will also benefit the people of a those state if against Oshomole's intention, Obaseki wins a re-election. That's, that's one of the two ways it can end, right? That will be good for the people. But if for some crazy reason, Oshomole imposes his will on the party architecture in the state, and rigs Oshomole out or defeats him in, in the poll, or Baseki out defeats him in the poll using the people, then it's back to the same cycle of Godfatherism works. So let's not look too far, right? Let's enjoy the fact that we are at a time in the political history of a do state when someone is saying, hey, leave me to govern this state so I can be judged based, based on, my, on performance. my performance rather than your influence. And that's, that's fair. Your final yeah, it's fair. It's fair. It's fair. I, I think it's, it's short and simple. You know, nobody wants any rift between anybody. But what Nigerians want is thorough governance. And the situation whereby one always feels that he has to always be on top, you have served your eight years successfully without any, any, a, a, any hiccup or whatever, some of all these things that are happening now because you believe that your authority came from Abuja. Now somebody is there. Why not allow that person to do what the people elected him for? It is one for you to be a godfather to somebody. It's another thing for you to allow the person to work for the people. I guess that's where we have to draw a curtain on this part of the conversation. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank okay. you very much. And of course, we'll be taking a short break. And when we return, Mieti Allah and yet another threat is up for discussion. Stay with us.